the 11th plenary meeting of the General Assembly is called to order. The Assembly will continue its consideration of Agenda Item 8, entitled General Debate. The Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Manasseh Tamokana Sokavare, Prime Minister of Solomon Islands. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Manasseh Tamukana Sokavara, Prime Minister of Solomon Islands. I invite him to address the Assembly. Mr. President, Your Excellencies, Head of States, Head of Governments, Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, I bring greetings from the people of Solomon Islands to this August Chamber. We reaffirm our commitment to the principles of this 78 years old organization for a world of peace and shared prosperity, progress with partnership and sustainable future with dignity and uh, liberty. Mr. President, the people of Solomon Islands extend our congratulations to a fellow islander from Trinidad and Tobago, His Excellency Ambassador Dennis Francis, on your election as President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly. We also acknowledge your predecessor, His Excellency Ambassador uh, Saba Korosi, for his stewardship throughout the 77th Session of the General Assembly. And I wish him every success in his future endeavors. I, too, would like to join the international community in conveying on behalf of the people of Solomon Islands our deepest condolences to the government and people of the Kingdom of Morocco and Libya, respectively. We pray for their speedy recovery and uh, that the Almighty give strength and comfort to those who have lost their loved ones, livelihoods, and homes. Mr. President, the choice of this year's theme is very interesting, given our current state of world affairs, and is one that resonates well with Solomon Islands. Eight years ago, in this very hall, we made a pledge to save our planet, eradicate poverty, and address the climate crisis. Collectively, we resolved to adopt the 17 Sustainable Development Goals in our bids to ensure that no one is left behind. The Paris Agreement is also a testament of that unified resolve. However, today, the health of our planet has declined and poverty has increased. We are also presented with a runaway climate crisis that threatens our very existence and questions our resolve. These multiple predicaments, coupled with the toxic mix of geopolitical power posturing, conflicts, and economic downturn, as interrogated our collective commitments to the very purpose of our organization and the effectiveness of multilateralism in our fast changing world. Taking stock of our achievements, it is unacceptable that 85% of global sustainable development goals are either off track, regressed, or stagnant. The gravity of this situation cannot be ignored, especially for LDCs and SEEDs. The theme presented not only highlights the failure of multilateralism, but raises the immediate need for us to restore our trust and reignite our solidarity by holding our global commitment within the principles and spirit of the United Nations Charter. Mr. President, the theme further presents an opportunity 
for us to take stock of our own shortcomings and to see where we can breathe new life into the 2030 agenda. If it means re-engineering our method of collaboration and raising our ambition to bolster and accelerate global action in the next seven years, then we must start today. As a LDC, we are heartened by the international community support to extend our preparatory period to graduate in, 90, in, in 2027. We thank you for your solidarity and support. Solomon Islands remain committed to have our smooth transition strategy in place by the end of 2024. We are reviewing our 2016 to 2035 national development strategy and have prioritized infrastructure resilience, digital, digital connectivity, technology transfer, investment, trade and energy reforms to ensure our graduation is resilient, sustainable and irreversible. This is our effort to save and rescue the 2030 agenda. To propel our economic recovery and build our resilience, we need bilateral and multilateral support to advance our development aspirations and address our vulnerabilities. And in that vein, we once again reiterate our call for an enhanced UN in-country presence. Mr. President, we therefore call for the immediate implementation of the six priorities of the DOA Program of Action 2022-2031 and translating these commitments into reality. We also welcome Solomon Islands' inclusion in the pilot phase of the early warning systems through the resilience uh, building mechanism and look forward to the utilization of the iGrad facility and to support our transition initiatives toward graduation. The world's commitment to multilateralism must be strengthened. Solomon Islands calls for a stronger political will for the halves to grant LDCs with non-reciprocal trade arrangement and generalized system of preference arrangement. Good neighborly relations means caring and striving for all. The 47 LDCs account for only 1% of global trade. We acknowledge the value South-South cooperation because it is less restrictive more responsive, and is aligned to our national needs. We applaud the People's Republic of China for the initiative in accelerating the implementation of the 2030 Agenda through the Belt and Road Initiative, Global Development Initiative, Global Security Initiative, and Global Civilization Initiative. During my discussions with uh, President Xi Jinping in July 2023, Solomon Islands and China reached an understanding to establish a comprehensive strategic framework that aims to achieve our national development strategy and the 2030 agenda through these transformative initiatives. These initiatives carry significant importance in promoting, implementing, and achieving the United Nations 2030 agenda for sustainable development goals. And we call on all partners to adopt this transformative partnership model. If we are to rebuild trust and reignite solidarity, then let us start by changing how we engage and reforming our international financial architecture. Our appetite for transformative change has never been higher, and we look forward to working closely with all partners who are genuine to partner with us in our path to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals. Mr. President, I call on the establishment of a seeds, permanent seat in decision-making body within the international financial architecture to ensure inclusivity. As a small developing state, we support the fourth Small Islands Developing uh, Countries Conference uh, scheduled to be held in uh, Antigua, uh, Barbuda, in May uh, 2024. 
the gathering is expected to present a roadmap of collective action to succeed this Samoa pathway. And we have every confidence this new partnership will be ambitious and uh, recommit global action to the unique and special needs of SEEDS. Solomon Islands supports the call for the adoption of the multidimensional uh, vulnerability index and its implementation and, uh, oper and oper oper operationalization during the uh, 78 United Nations General Assembly. This is a SEEDS initiative that takes into account the cross-dimensional vulnerability of seeds to recover and build back better. Therefore, the modus operandi of the international financial institutions must be reformed to address our special circumstances vulnerability. Mr. President, there can be no sustainable development without peace and no peace without sustainable development. The world cannot achieve the sustainable development goals with all the conflict and wars that is going on. The past seven years has shown us that. Solomon Islands reiterates its call for the cessation of all conflict, including the Ukraine war. We must restore faith in our charter and give peace a chance. We must better understand and listen to each other more and seek diplomatic solution to all conflict. Wars have exacerbated our vulnerability, broken our trust and undermined our solidarity. It remains a great distraction from our development agenda. Swords must be now converted to plow. It is time we sow seeds of peace so that we can reap the fruit of progress, prosperous and sustainability. Mr. President, we continue to call for an expanded, democratic, equitable, transparent, and accountable Security Council that represents today's realities. This includes a, dis a dedicated small islands development state seat. Solomon Islands registered our interest nine years ago to serve in the Security Council for the period 2031, 2032. 20, uh, 20, uh, Today, we continue to seek international support for our candidature and thank those who have given their support. We again reiterate our strong belief in multilateralism and reaffirm our commitment to the spirit and purpose of the United Nations Charter. Mr. President, Solomon Islands will host the 17 Pacific Games uh, the region's largest uh, and premium multi-sporting uh, uh, event for the first time in our history from uh, 19 November uh, to uh, December, uh, 2nd of December. Our shores will be uh, graced by the presence of more than 5,000 athletes uh, of 24 countries and the territories with the Pacific, uh, within the Pacific region, including Australia and New Zealand. And we stand united and uh, proud to deliver on this regional commitment. Solomon Islands is grateful and appreciates the ongoing support from our bilateral and multilateral partners, in particular people, the People's Republic of China, who has become our leading infrastructure partner. We also thank Saudi Arabia, Australia, New Zealand, Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, the Republic of Korea, and Japan for their support as well. Mr. President, countless voices <coughs> have echoed the same sentiment that climate change remains the single greatest threat to our people and planet. But have we seriously and truly taken heed? Ambition under the Paris Agreement remains low. We need to keep the 1.5 degrees Celsius alive and close the mit mitigation gap. The global uh, stock take under the Paris Agreement is critical to keep everyone honest. Now where we are, what we need to do, and how to keep the 1.5 goal alive. Loss and damage mechanism needs to be resourced and operationalized. Global, global trust needs to be restored to uphold the credibility 
of the Paris Agreement. We must walk the talk by taking drastic climate action. Southern Ireland welcomes the International Court of Justice deliberations on the Vanuatu Initiative for Climate Change. We must accelerate our transition to a low carbon economy and further support the Portville Initiative for a just transition from fossil fuels. Developed countries must take the lead in financing the construction of climate resilient safe islands in, in seeds. This must be a global priority. Mr. President, Solomon Islands is pleased to inform the General Assembly that we have ratified the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disability, the uh, National Disability Inclusive Policy, and the Mental Health Policy provides the framework for implementation to ensure the rights of persons with disabilities are promoted and uh, protected at all levels. We are cognizant of our duty to provide an enabling environment and mechanism that enables our people to exercise their fundamental rights as provided under our Constitution. Solomon Islands, uh, Mr. President, reaffirmed the right, uh, the right uh, to self-determination as uh, enshrined under the United Nations Charter. And on the question of New Caledonia and France uh, Polynesia, uh, Solomon Islands notes with deep concern the credibility of the latest referendum in New Caledonia. We urgently, urgently call on the relevant body and stakeholders to look into this matter. Mr. President, Solomon Islands note with deep, deep concern the six-decade-old embargo imposed on Cuba. This unilateral action undermines the spirit of multilateralism and Cuba's progress towards achieving the 2030 agenda. We urge our friend and partner, the United States of America, to lift the unjust embar uh, economic embargo placed on Cuba. This is an opportunity to rebuild trust and reignite solidarity. Embargoes do not augur well with the resolve of this august body to leave no one behind. I take this opportunity on behalf of the people of Solomon Islands to thank Cuba for the support to our health sector through the training of our medical doctors over recent years. Mr. President, two days ago, Solomon Islands uh, assigned uh, and become amongst the first signatories to the uh, agreement on the co uh, conservation and sustainable use of marine biological diversity of areas beyond uh, national jurisdiction, a subsidiary to the United Nations Convention on Law of the Sea. Solomon Islands, in collaboration with the Pacific Island Forum Fisheries Agency, will host a summit on the implementation of SEG 14.4 next year in Honiara. This will be done in, in coordination with United Nations Special Envoy for the Ocean. The summit will showcase uh, Pacific uh, leadership in tuna fisheries management. The outcome will feed into the third UN Ocean Conference in June 2025. We note the ongoing work of current intergovernmental negotiate, negotiating committee to uh, develop an uh, uh, international uh, legally binding instrument on plastic pollution, including in the marine environment. This is critical to maintaining the health, productivity, and resilience of our ocean, and is in line with 2050 uh, strategy of the Blue Pacific Continent. Mr. President, Pacific, the Pacific has been a victim of power politics long before we become a member of this organization. The Battle of Guadalcanal is recorded in history as one of the fiercest battles of World War II, a war that was not of our making. The lack of urgency eight decades ago to remove these UXOs comes to a great loss to Solomon Islands and uh, uh, in, in finance and, uh, and, and lives. And on this juncture, I would like to thank the, the government of the United States of America for their continued assistance to the efforts to date. However, more needs to be done to address this threat. And I call on responsible uh, countries to remove the uh, UXOs and uh, uh, compensate lives affected and, and, and lost. 
since the inception of the United Nations uh, in 1945. The Pacific Islands remained a stage uh, for power projection by developed nations. As a consequence, from 1946 to 1996, approximately 300 nuclear devices were tested in the Pacific, including the Marshall Islands, French Polynesia, and Kiribati. Did we have a say in this? We never did. Mr. President, these countries and their people must be comp compensated commensurably. Mr. President, nuclear, nuclear footprint of uh, big powers in the Pacific is intrinsically carved into our history and genes. Certain populations to this day continue to suffer from health issues because of nuclear testing and dumping in the Pacific. As a signatory to the 1985 Treaty of Rarotonga, Treaty on Non-Proliferation of uh, Nuclear Weapons, our commitment to keep our blue Pacific continent nuclear-free is non-negotiable. We ratified the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty early this year, which is a testament to our conviction and principle to a nuclear-free Pacific. We remain concerned on the development of military nuclear investment within Pacific region and its potential to trigger nuclear arms race and its implication for our nuclear-free status. Mr. President, Solomon Island stands with like-minded Pacific Islanders and is, a, is appalled by Japan's decision to discharge over a million tons of treated nuclear waste water into the, into the ocean. We note IAEA's assessment report is, is inconclusive and that the scientific data shared remains in, inadequate, incomplete, and biased. These concerns were ignored. If this nuclear waste is safe, it should be stored in Japan. The fact that it's dumped into the ocean shows that it is not safe. The effect of this act is transboundary and intergenerational, and it's an attack on global trust and solidarity. So the message is clear. Our lives, our people do not matter. The increased warning, warming and acidification of the ocean against the discharge of treated nuclear water over a period of 30 years plus poses worrying risk for our people's well-being and future. We call on Japan to explore other options in addressing the treated nuclear waste water and immediately stop discharging it into the Pacific Ocean. If we are to rebuild trust and reignite global solidarity, we must be honest and frank in protecting our oceans, which is the lifeblood of our people. Mr. President, I'm morally and ethically obliged to speak for humanity, the voiceless, and our children's children. We are the ocean. It is our past, our present, and our future. It is the foundation of our very existence. It is our identity. Please stop the discharge of nuclear-treated water or history will judge us. In conclusion, Mr. President, in framing the future, we want, we need a reformed, rule-based international system that is future-ready and responsive to today's reality. A change of attitude and approach is needed. The need to understand and reach out to the vulnerable is critical. We must restore our faith in the United Nations Charter and force, renew and reaffirm our focus with vigor matched with resources to deliver our 2030 agenda. Mr. President, we only have one life to live, so let us right the wrongs of the past by rebuilding trust and reigniting solidarity to accelerate action on the 2030 agenda and its sustainable development goals towards peace, prosperity, progress, and sustainability for all. I close by paraphrasing Winston Churchill. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duty and so bear ourselves that if humankind and United Nations last for a thousand years, men and women will still say this was their finest hour. You meet together for a better United Nations. To God be the glory great things he has done. May God bless you all 
and may God bless the United Nations. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Prime Minister of Solomon Islands for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.